Plastic recycling is in a state of crisis. Less than 10% is actually recycled. Every day, nearly one million tons of plastic is created. The current and only process of mechanical recycling is failing. There's all kinds of plastic streams. We know we can't sort. But there's an enormous amount of pressure on the industry as a whole to come up with real solutions. One of these solutions may be in Silicon Valley. We're going to be producing useful chemicals from our plastic wastes in the future. We will solve this problem. Plastics are cheap to produce, they're cheap for consumers to buy, but once it's thrown away, it's just left to the city authorities to pick up, to transport, to sell. As recycling exists today, sorting the material is the first step. So we receive this mixture of material and it goes through a whole series of processing steps that include magnets, shredders, optical sorters, and so forth, each of which is designed to segregate material. We call this film plastic, what most people would think of as plastic bags. Nobody has the ability to take this, so this will go to a landfill. Hundreds of types of plastic exist, but mechanically sorting the material is so expensive, only a few plastics are worth selling. So this, these are our PET bales. They may not look pretty, but they are basically 98% PET. Looks like here might be a little bit of a carton. These bales go to another facility to be chopped and washed. If the plastic is clear and clean, it can be paired with virgin material for new products. If it's not, it gets downgraded into plastic that goes into the trash. Endless recycling of plastic has never existed, but that could soon change. The biggest problem is mechanical recycling is not very effective. It's a lot harder than most people think. After 30 years of experience making semiconductors, IBM discovered the building blocks of the most widely produced plastic in the world, PET, also known as polyester. What would happen if you can take this mixed waste stream and selectively remove the polyester, really generate a circular economy? Inside this IBM research facility, Bob Allen and his team invented a way to chemically remove plastic from highly contaminated waste streams, an impossible task for our current mechanical method. Their process starts with a catalyst to break down the plastic. Then they cook it at a high temperature, like a pressure cooker. In the reactor, it only goes after the PET molecules, grabs them, and chews them up, like Pac-Man, just chews them up. The contaminants are then filtered out through a proprietary purification process. You will see something that looks one heck of a lot like Breaking Bad. It cools and solidifies. The powder is then converted into what IBM sees as plastic gold. This is real live PET. Plastic ready for manufacturing. IBM's research is complete, but the process is too expensive. Really the challenge is seeing how inexpensive you can make this process. Our starting material is waste. That's a very, very attractive feedstock. We stand a real good chance of being competitive to petrochemically based PET. Allen and his team are consulting with major plastics manufacturers in cities around the world to make their research into a reality. I'm willing to bet money in five to 10 years, waste plastic will be seen as a renewable resource. But IBM isn't the only blue chip company betting on chemical recycling. Chevron and Procter & Gamble are working on alternative solutions for other plastics. And scientists at Loop Industries are testing a recycling process for some major bottle manufacturers. While investment is increasing, chemical recycling has yet to be put to work. Where a lot of technologies have failed is when they've gone from that lab scale where they have incredibly good control over the feedstock to commercial scale where it's not that they can't keep up with the volume but they can't keep up with the fact that all of a sudden they come across a coat hanger or a sneaker. It's not a homogenous product we produce. Some environmental scientists have serious doubts about the viability of the process. So I think a lot of people ask, is chemical recycling just something that's going to allow us to carry on with business as usual? Maybe um, we need 
to focus more on actually reducing or eliminating plastic use. We don't know much about the costs. I mean, we're seeing these great ideas, but while oil and gas prices are low, it looks very unrealistic. Even if chemical recycling makes discarded plastic a resource, there will always be a need for waste infrastructure. The biggest problem in the future is that most wastes are going to be now generated in the growing cities in the global south. And they do not have anything like the same waste infrastructure that we do. I think there's a lot of incentive to put whatever resources necessary to make that successful. With or without these innovations, issues of waste generation and management will be key for the success of cities in the decades to come.